Hey everyone, welcome back to the Dr. Ryan Lowry YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to be talking all about crumble cookie. If you don't know what crumble cookie is, you've been living underneath a rock or you already know what I'm gonna be telling you today, which is why you're avoiding them. But either way, we're gonna jump into it and dive in and say why should you or should you not maybe partake in crumble cookies? First and foremost, look at these things. They they look absolutely delicious. They're uh, so many different flavors that they have. But the biggest question that we have is how many calories, right? No one goes to a cookie store or something like that being like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking at uh, dieting while eating these, we know that, but that we still need to be cognizant of the amount of calories that are in there. Because if a crumble cookie is near you, chances are you're not just eating one. You're probably going to get a box of four, a box of six, perhaps a box of 12. And based on what you see in the store and online might not be the truth. And so let's dive into what that means. If you look at this cookie and you look at one of the cookies that are inside of the box, I would love for you guys to guess in the comments how many calories you think are in one cookie. So this was a question that I asked myself and I was thinking about of how many calories are in one single cookie and it took me diving a little bit deeper to understand what it truly was. Until you go to the website, you don't know what the answer is because on first glance, you look at this cookie and it says it's only 170 calories but that's not right. But before we jump into that, let's go into the ingredients and talk about what are some of the, some of the ingredients inside of this cookie and why if you're concerned about any form of long-term health, maybe you can have one of these on occasion, but definitely shouldn't be eating them often by any means. So first, let's look at some of the things that are gonna cause some challenges, right? You have flour, you have more flour, um, you have a ton of butter, which is towards the top, which is why, you, where, great, that's not necessarily bad if you, people on keto love high fat, right? Not when it's mixed with a ton of carbohydrates and sugar, right? You, you'll see how much fat is actually inside of one cookie. Then you have the chocolate chips, and this is where the sugar load starts, right? You have sugar there, you have peanut butter, there's sugar inside of the peanut butter. On top of that, you have these inflammatory oils, vegetable oil, rapeseed, and cottonseed oil, highly inflammatory oils in the peanut butter itself. Um, now we have the sugar overload, brown sugar, regular sugar. Um, now we got Muddy Buddies on top of these things because we can't just have a cookie, right? We need to have Muddy Buddies on top of them. So let's look at what's inside the Muddy Buddies. You look up, oh, we missed some sugar here, some dextrose here. Um, you look inside what's inside of some of these Muddy Buddies, cornmeal, sugar, dextrose, then you have peanut butter, more sugar, more vegetable oil. You get the point. The real, oh, even down here, we, we had to sprinkle some powdered sugar on top, right? So you get the point of what's going on here. A ton of sugar, a ton of fat, a ton of highly inflammatory oils. By no means is this a health food, and I don't think anyone goes into it thinking this is a health food. The ultimate question is, how bad is it, right? We know it's not conducive to our overall health and, and wellness, but the number one question is, if I'm eating one of these, how bad truly is it? And so we're going to dive into that. So I'd love to pull your answers out if you, if you typed them in the comments or you wrote down. Let me pull those answers out because I think you're going to be just as shocked as I was. So again, you go on the website and it says 170 calories, uh, give or take, for some of these cookies. And you're like, dang, I could fit that in, right? I'm, I'm eating 2,000 calories, uh, maybe 2,500 calories a day. That doesn't seem too bad at all, right? Well, here's the actual number. If we break this down, these are the actual nutrition facts. So you see the 170, that is for one quarter of a cookie. So Crumble does something that very, a lot of companies do when they're trying to hide how many calories and how much carbohydrate and how much sugar is inside of their product. They manipulate the serving size. I don't know about you guys, but I won't eat just one fourth of a cookie of crumble. And let me, for, for demonstration purposes, let me show you what one fourth of a cookie looks like. So this is one fourth of a cookie, right? Probably for me, two to three bites. I'm telling you, if I had this entire thing warm, 
I'm eating the entire cookie and likely two cookies because they're that good, right? Ton of sugar, ton of butter, tastes amazing. They even put some powdered sugar on top just for some added spice, right? Again, I'm eating an entire cookie. I'm not eating two to three bites. Now, some people might, but the reality is most people go into this thinking, I'm going to eat a cookie. And when you do that, you're not eating 170 calories, you are eating 680 calories. So for demonstration purposes, let me show you what a full cookie looks like. Oh my God, these are dense. All that butter, right? Can you see that? Oh my goodness. Um, so you can see, I mean, they're, they're not small cookies by any means. Let me make that very clear. I'm not saying like these are bite size size cookies, but I would do that. I, if I ordered these, I would say I would eat one of these cookies. Probably for me, I'd go for the, the double chocolate chip, to be honest, maybe regular chocolate chip, but um, I'd eat the entire cookie. And when you do that, you're not dealing with what you perceive that the calorie load is. Thank you. So again, for the whole cookie, we're looking at 680 calories. We're looking at 45 grams of fat. Now, someone on keto is like, that's great. Not when you have combined with 65 grams of carbohydrates, right? 45 grams of fat, 65 grams of carbohydrates. Of those 65, 50 are sugars, right? Added sugars, so a ton of sugar in this thing. And then you have nine grams of protein. One would call this an absolute metabolic disaster for one cookie. And so someone like me back in my heyday, I'd probably eat two of these cookies. I'm looking at over 1300 calories just from two cookies that I'm probably gonna eat at the end of my day after having all the rest of my calories. So I say that as delicious as these are and how amazing they taste, you need to look at that when take that into consideration when you're ordering them or try and find ways to make alternatives which i'll talk about here in a second but i wanted to bring that to light because i i thought it was interesting when someone's like oh there's only 170 calories inside of a crumble cookie i said there's no way there's absolutely no way that there can only be 170 calories and online and in the store they they highlight 170 calories for one fourth of a cookie i don't know about you but i'm not eating one fourth of a cookie i'm eating an entire cookie and so i have that 680 calories and all that fat all the all that sugar all that all of those carbohydrates and obviously very little protein and probably from the peanut butter if anything so that being said i want to wrap this up and and with the question of what do i do how do we answer these two questions right how do we answer how many calories should i eat so you look at this and you go well let me factor this in because i want to have a crumble cookie on a saturday night how many calories should i eat in a day um, if you're trying to stay low carb, uh, I would highly suggest you go to our calculator. It's just ketogenic.com slash calculator. There, you can insert all of your information. I think it's one of the most accurate uh, and up-to-date calculators there is, period. Even if you're not keto, I think it gives you, and you're just interested in calories, it'll give you a great recommendation for both rest days and active days. If you are trying, trying to stay low carb, uh, again, it'll, it'll give you your rest days and your active days and also a breakdown of your macronutrients of what that might look like. So go check that out. We factor in a lot of things that most other calculators don't look at, um, like your what, what type of movement you have throughout the day, how much you exercise and what your overall goals are. So again, ketogenic.com slash calculator if you're interested in learning how many calories you should be eating on a daily basis. And then the last one is like, all right, Ra, you scared me. Uh, I don't want to go have a crumble cookie. I'm with you. I mean, as, as delicious as they are, for me, I look at that and go, how can I make something that's almost as good that is not a metabolic disaster? And so that's where I get creative. We have recipes on ketodrink.com, but there's so many others that are out there on the interwebs of looking at how do you make a delicious chocolate chip cookie or something else that isn't loaded with a ton of sugar and probably uses some type of sugar alternative like allulose, which you know we talked a lot about before on this channel, erythritol, um, which again is a sugar alcohol, but one of the better ones, stevia or monk fruit, right? That, those are kind of the, the sweet four. Um, but that being said, how do I deal with a sweet tooth or cravings? Let me be honest with you, I'm one of those people, right? I have a huge sweet tooth, ton of cravings. Me at 18 years old wouldn't eat two of those. I'd probably eat the box of six uh, in, a, in a sitting 
And I was so insulin sensitive at the time because I was playing baseball. I had multiple practices per day, working out like a madman, had very little responsibility. So yeah, like I could eat a lot and get away with it. I don't have that same metabolism today, um, primarily because I'm not as active, right? And things change as you get older. But how do you deal with that? Couple of different ways. I talked about one is look for alternatives, right? I don't want to deprive you and say like, oh, you can never eat another cookie again. Screw that. That would be a, a very sad life. Find an alternative, right? Find an alternative. The second thing I'll say is, is um, as you start to incorporate in periods of intermittent fasting, you'll notice, and as you go into a deeper level, level of ketosis, whether that's through a ketogenic diet and or exogenous ketones, you'll start to notice that your hunger levels decline, right? It's acting on certain uh, areas of our brain that impact ghrelin and leptin, um, which are hunger and some of our satiety hormones. So uh, you'll notice that. So going, going into deeper states of ketosis, practicing intermittent fasting, being on a ketogenic diet and exogenous ketones, um, any of those three over time will help with hunger. The other one that I wanna say that I don't think a lot of people talk about is two, increase volume. I'm gonna talk about what that means. And then the last one that I'll, that I'll mention is, I'll just put gluco and I'll leave you, I'll leave you to, think about that one while I talk about the second one. So increase volume. So what do I mean by that? Increase the volume of your meals, increase the volume of the foods that you're eating. How do you do that? One, an easy way to increase the volume of your foods, like with dinner, is have what I call uh, a bass, right? Big ass salad. Have a big ass salad before you eat your meal. Think about your stomach as a balloon. It's a balloon that ultimately fills up with food. Do you want it to be filled up with a 680 calorie cookie? Or do you want it to be filled up with like 150 calories of a big ass salad that make you full and then you kind of get through your dinner and you're like, I'm done for the night, right? Very, very, very different in terms of satiety. So increase your volume. One of the things you can do, other ways you can do this, drink a full glass of water before your meals. Um, that helps significantly. Or if you're having a shake, blend the shake with ice that will increase the volume without changing the calorie load. So if you take a shake and you're drinking a, a protein shake, instead of just mixing it in a shaker bottle, take that same amount of volume or that same amount of liquid, pour it into a blender, add some ice and blend it for about a minute to two minutes. It will add air in essence to that and it'll make it way bigger. It probably won't fit in your same shaker cup, but that's way more volume that's taking up space in your stomach to help keep you fuller. And then the last one I'll talk about is something called glucomannan. Um, glucoman, it's a fiber. Um, there's there's new some of the konjac noodles utilize glucomannan, but glucomannan you can just get pills of glucomannan, um, and it's a fiber that when it hits water, it kind of becomes like this gel substance, so it increases in volume to kind of help again fill up the stomach. It's something I've seen work quite well. Um, so try and supplement with maybe one to three grams of glucomannan. In before your meals to help increase satiety so that way you're not as hungry during those meals, right? And of course, this, the, the last one I would say is just make sure you're eating whole food, high quality meals. So that way you don't go out and you eat something that's trash, you're still hungry and you go smash a 680 calorie cookie. That is not what we want. That is not what's going to help lead us towards a better health span and increase metabolic health. So I hope that helps. I hope you guys got a little understanding of crumble cookies. Again, delicious, but just be cautious because it's not 170 calories. It is 680 calories, depending upon how much you eat. And for if you're like me, you're going to be eating the entire cookie. So I hope that helps. Let me know what other companies or what other products or anything else you want to hear from me on this channel. Let me know down in the comments. I appreciate you guys and I'll talk to you soon.